live from the Quad Cities with Morgan OTA and Kyle Keel. This is Quad Cities Live. Today on Quad Cities Live, a look at Vibrant Credit Union and its new initiatives that are breaking barriers when it comes to banking. This month is all about mental health awareness. And before we close out the month of May, we'll learn more about the variety of important services offered through the Eastern Iowa Mental Health Organization. And later, connect your mind and body while surrounded by the beauty of Mother Nature. We'll get the details on a series of upcoming natural healing events at Nahant Marsh. If you're watching Quad Cities Live on this Tuesday, May 28th. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Morgan OTA. And I'm Kyle Keel. We're all getting back into the swing of things after yes. the long holiday week. I mean, it's official, I guess unofficially official, yeah. the start of summer. Right. It's hard for you to say that, being a yeah, meteorologist exactly. and all, but it is. We, we unofficially <laughs> uh, kicked off summer this weekend. We had absolutely fantastic weather we sure for did. most of the weekend. Yeah, most of the weekend was really nice. Had yeah. a, a few hailstorms yesterday, but those were later in the day, so hopefully you were able to get in those barbecues yeah. and everything else outside. Absolutely. So we're going to start uh, today with our winds of the weekend, yeah. uh, something that we typically do at the start and the end of every week, yeah. and we're going to start the show with it today. So uh, what, do you, what do you got? for us. So because the weather was so great, uh, well, I was telling you just before the show, my family, except for me, knock on some wood, <laughs> was sick over the weekend. So we had to cancel oh a lot no. of our plans, but all of us were feeling better yesterday. So we decided to take advantage of the weather and headed out to uh, take a little bit of a hike there on Sylvan Island. So oh, uh, that's a place that I frequented it a lot as a child, my wife as well. And so we decided to take our kids there and uh, they had an absolute blast. Of course, uh, we had to find the trails that led to the water. There they are holding hands a that moment where they cute. weren't, you know, bickering over toys and whatnot. So uh, we had a really good time and uh, they certainly enjoyed it. So we will be making a return here very soon. Yeah, you got the coveted hand holding photo yes, there. Yes, yeah. Uh, that, between the two kids. That is my, a beautiful spot though. Yeah, and I tried to go in front of them, but they, she was like, Chandler was like, no. No. Give my hand back. You but, get what I give. So what's your win? Yeah, my win. Uh, well, uh, thank goodness the weather one. was perfect. Uh, yesterday I did. I did the uh, Quad Cities Running Festival uh, half marathon yesterday. Wow. Uh, that's me and some folks from the Fleet yeah. Feet group there at the starting line. Uh, it was frigid cold going out in the morning. Oh, yeah. It we was started cool at 7 a.m. and yeah. we were all like chatterboxes. Like yeah. Uh, remedied that pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, there I snapped a photo at mile 10. I thought, wow. yeah, maybe I should take some photos since <laughs> yeah. we do this thing called win of the week. <laughs> That's we me um, uh, figuratively dying. Um, <laughs> what mile was that at? That was probably about 9 or 10. 9 or 10, yep. Yeah. Right. Um, so for those that don't know, a half marathon is 13.1 13 yeah. um, miles. And it's that's me my best friend Kirsten uh, there with my medal. But I was waiting to get to it because my daughter Darby was able to come out and watch. She made me this sign. Yes, yeah, so cute. It says, Look at that. go mommy, <laughs> you can do this. And then there's a mommy heart and a Darby heart that she put on the sign. That's and so she cute. held that up for me and was able to come out at different points during the oh. race and kind of pumped me up a little bit so um yeah it was a it was definitely a win uh yeah. fail i can't really walk today i can't do the steps today yeah it's struggling it's hard after that half marathon it's been several years since i've done mine so i commend you for doing two in less than a year yes well thank you thank <laughs> yes. you so much <laughs> i'll get out there one day yeah <laughs> all right well uh, let's talk to our first guest today yeah. who has created pieces for stars like miranda lambert and now you can own the same quality and style of clothing yourself this is very exciting yeah. abby peters from snake Farm Creative is here with us now. Abby, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks you, for having me. Uh, you make amazing things. Um, so talk a little bit about what it is that you do. I make custom Western wear, which is kind of a broad idea, sure. but I work mostly with really anybody who has an interest in, in a piece like this, and I build them from start to finish. Um, talking with them about their ideas, yeah. cutting the fabric from the beginning mm -hmm. to end, appliques to beginning to end, um, to make a garment that they truly, hopefully, feel like themselves in, feel like the best version of themselves in. Yeah. And you brought a lot of your pieces, which we'll get to uh, here okay. in just a few moments, but obviously, uh, you don't go, you don't get something like this by just winging it. So you've obviously had yeah. a lot of experience with sewing. So how did you even start with a hobby of sewing? Uh, very unexpectedly, <laughs> by accident. That's how it works usually, <laughs> really? right? Yeah. I, it started really only about three or four years ago when I started oh, okay. doing this more full-time mm -hmm. um, and it really started even before that when I was in all places living in Mozambique and then yeah. shortly thereafter in Haiti. Oh wow. When I was a kid I had learned the basics of sewing from my grandma and my aunt who oh. were both very talented sewists um, but just kind of like hand sewing little things like that and after seeing the impacts of 
fast fashion globally um, and the clothing waste that results from sure. it. And also just feeling frustrated after several years of living in a climate where I couldn't wear clothes that felt comfortable yeah. based on where I was working or culturally. Um, I came back to the States and just felt so frustrated. It made an impact on you. Yeah, yeah. and I'm also someone uh, proportionately who doesn't really fit into things off the rack. And so I said to myself, I bet I could figure this out. <laughs> and That's so awesome. I got wow. out the old sewing machine and uh, kind of taught myself. Yeah, That's well, great. you have been making pieces for stars. Like yeah. we mentioned, Kyle mentioned at the beginning, Miranda Lambert, uh, Caitlin Butts, uh, Reed Connolly. So, I mean, how did these people find you? This is amazing. I mean, <laughs> what does that. that feel like to see <laughs> yeah. her wearing that on, on a stage? Very surreal. Yeah. Uh, that's a cliche, but I think a lot of these pieces get done on tight deadlines, so I've fully dissociated from them. <laughs> yeah. They end up in these places. Um, mm -hmm. And then plus to be sitting, you know, in my living room in Eldridge watching these things yeah. on the big screen. You know, how do you, uh, how do you make sense of that? No. I haven't yet. No. Um, and I kind of hope I never do, right? There's something really There's nice something about that. special about that as well, yeah. yeah. So, and it all happened because of the internet. The internet is a very weird place, and yeah. I was just posting things on Instagram, um, and it got sent to the right people, or the right people found their way to me, and here we are. That is truly amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Let's talk about your style. So, State yeah. Farm Creative, what's your style? Where do you get all your inspiration from? Because we've got a, a variety of, of different pieces here. We've got some yeah. uh, different <laughs> emblems here on, on the table. We've got uh, the, the cicadas. cicadas. <laughs> very <laughs> tiny. So, yeah, what's your inspiration? It really all started with taking the idea of my great uncle's pearl snaps and bolo ties that he would wear to family events sure. and thinking about how I would reimagine them in a way that felt like me, especially yeah. on this uh, journey of figuring out my sense of place and identity back in the States. And so really the idea has always been to take something that is so traditional as Western wear and has a lot of these very traditional ideas and concepts and forms yeah. and reimagine it in a way that felt contemporary and authentic and just really interesting that yeah. if somebody sees it, they say, I think I know who made that. Yeah, y you absolutely have that you Thank know, you. Yeah. nailed down. Okay, so let's talk about a few of your pieces that you brought with you today. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start uh, at the mannequins. At the mannequins. Yeah. Okay, so. You got this uh, first piece right yeah. over here. Let's describe. Yes, so this is one of my first forays into men's Western wear. Okay. And um, I really wanted to take something that uh, is so s standard in the Western industry, especially, which is just the idea of a men's jacket. Mm -hmm. And more than that, at formal events, it's always just kind of a basic blazer. And yeah. so I wanted to do something a little more fun that felt like that old school denim jacket, but felt a little dressier, a little more fresh, something yeah. that you could wear anywhere dress it up dress it down it's super cool so thank yeah. you <laughs> okay i love this this reminds me of something that like casey musgraves would wear there's something like that <laughs> yeah that would that be is, very cool yeah would that be cool <laughs> and that was kind of the concept behind it i wanted That's to look cool. at a lot of um, the contemporary cuts and styles but then also take it really old school thinking like patsy klein and some of those greats oh i love um, that the yellow rose of texas and think about oh, how yeah. we take these old school traditional elements and put them into something new and exciting that is super cool yeah. um you know you talked a little bit about your years of service um before we move on to the other other yeah. really cool items yeah. one of my favorites is over there um, how did you get into to that? You talked about being in Mozambique and I believe Haiti. Mm -hmm. um, so talk about that part of your life and the impact that that's really made on, on yeah. switching gears and doing something like this. Yeah, so growing up my godfather was best friends with my dad since they were nine years old and he had a video production company that ended up taking him around the world doing um, promotional material, informational material for organizations and different groups who were working internationally. And okay. so my dad would travel with him as his equipment manager. They would come back and tell these incredible stories yeah. of the places they'd been and the things they'd seen. And so I always knew that was something I wanted to do. I just didn't know in what capacity. And so when I was in junior high, high school, he did a video for an organization based in Atlanta, but with ties here called Serve Haiti. Okay. And he came back from that trip changed. Yeah. He was so impacted by Haiti and everything that he saw and experienced there, even after having traveled ar around, around the world. world yeah. And so he said to me, if you're going to go anywhere, you need to go to Haiti first. And so I ended up uh, getting involved with the organization for several years, traveled back and forth, just doing shorter trips and um, fundraising and events. And then I ended up with a major in social work. And so did my social work practicum there for a summer. And through that, got kind of funneled into the Peace Corps by someone well, in the organization. Amazing. 
yeah, never expected it, but it was incredible. And yeah. after that, worked in Haiti again. And who would have thought, I certainly yeah. never did, that it would lead to this. But it gives you such a cool perspective, yeah. I think, um, when it comes to personal style and, um, you know, what you've been able to do. Now, uh, I, I don't want to wrap up with you yet because I want yeah. like, to talk about some of the ideas. We'll just had our eye on some stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think we're going to play yeah. dress up. Yeah. So I do, I want to. Um, I love this one here. So tell us about Thank this one. You. I'm going to hold it out to the front so that, Look at that. Owen can get. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> This is so, so cool. Thank you. That is a take, my take on um, the kind of the 70s motif, 60s, 70s patchwork yeah. put into a, a Western set. I'm, this is like a, so, so cool. Like Thank it's you. just so unique and it's just so beautifully done. Thank you. It's very impressive. And yeah. these clothing items are not meant to just be worn once. I mean, you are creating these to last, right? Yeah, that's the goal because all of these, these are unique because these are just sample pieces or yeah. ideas I had. But when I'm making a piece, I'm getting someone's body measurements and we're building something for them from yeah. top to bottom, from fit to the, the motif. And so, yeah, my idea there really from start to finish is that it's a lifetime piece and yeah. hopefully a generational piece. Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah, well, uh, of course, you've shown us a lot and you've got a lot more to show off as well. So if you would like to learn more about Snake Farm Creative, you can find them on Instagram and you can also email Abby at snakefarmcreative at gmail.com. Abby, thanks so much for sharing your talent with us today. Thank this you is great. for having Thank you for being welcome. here. I hope we see lots more of you. Yes. It's been really fun. Thank you. Thank you. Up next on Quad Cities Live, a local credit union is breaking the mold. Vibrant Credit Union is here to tell us how big changes could mean big interest for customers. QC, that's where we work best when we're together. QC, that's where is brought to you by a partnership with the Quad Cities Chamber and Visit Quad Cities. Vibrant Credit Union is hoping to change the way people think about banking. Vibrant CEO Matt McCombs is joining us here on Quad Cities Live. Matt, welcome. Hey, thank you. Thanks excited for to be being here. here. Yeah. yeah, we're excited to have you. Um, so you uh, are really, you're trying to um, give your members something that they really cannot find anywhere else. Yeah, so I've been here 13 years already, uh, hard to believe. But yeah. when I think about the evolution of banking, what we've seen is that you know, overall banking is changing. The way consumers utilize their financial institution is just completely different than it was mm -hmm. 15 or 20 years ago. And at Vibrant, what we really were looking for is how do we create something of substantial value for our members other than the commodity that they get everywhere else? Yeah, absolutely. And we're gonna get into the different ways yeah. um, that you guys are doing that uh, as we speak. Um, first though, tell us a little bit about the history of Vibrant. Yeah, so Vibrant started here in the Quad Cities, actually originally as Deer Harvester Credit Union, oh, wow. uh, serving the uh, employees of the John Deere Harvester Works. Uh, so it started in 1935. There were eight individuals that brought $5 a piece together to create a cooperative with $40 in uh, total assets. Wow. Uh, over the years, uh, it evolved to where it went community back in the 90s. And then the name changed from Deer Harvester to DHCU in 2005 and from DHCU to Vibrant back in 2015. That actually is such a unique, very Quad Cities, hyper-local yeah. uh, history. You know, yeah. not a lot of people would know that. Um, so one of the things that you're really focusing on is interest savings um, and uh, checking uh, why and balances. Why do you think that that is so such an important thing? Yeah, and it's hard to believe, but for 20 years we've had historically low rates, right? Okay. So if you've been out buying a home or you know buying a car, you've been used to getting really, really low loan rates, which yeah. we all loved. But if you had money in the bank, you felt the opposite, right? For 20 years, you've had you know such low return on your funds. Sure. Whereas today, we've seen rates go up, and consumers are at an opportunity where they can actually earn something on their on their money. Okay. Well, yeah, that makes as good a sense as anything, and it appears to be working really well for Vibrant right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, you guys are seeing uh, current and new members moving lots of money in deposits. Right. Um, just, I think we read some numbers that were just this past February that were pretty astonishing. Yeah. So even in February, we had twenty-six million dollars of new funds come into the organization. Uh, wow. Really, in the first five months of this year, we're up over fifty million in new funds coming in, averaging about two and a half million a week from new uh, members that are discovering the credit union. That's and what we found is these are a lot of folks that when you say credit union, they don't know what that means. Sure. They've never really given it an opportunity or chance. But when you see the rates that we're offering that are just so above market, 
we're finding that folks here in the Quad Cities and really even regionally are starting to open their eyes to what a credit union is and what Vibrant has to offer. Yeah, and I think that you guys sent us to some images or some graphics, so let's talk a little bit about CD promotions and rates. Yeah. Um, you know, what does that mean and um, how is this kind of more beneficial through Vibrant? Yeah, so CDs right now are certainly kind of a hot item. If you, if you go okay. back a handful of years ago, everyone kind of thought CDs as their grandparents' product. Right? Yes, That's what absolutely. you would have had is like my grandparents would have had the product like that. But we're seeing CDs come back really with a vengeance because as rates have gone up and financial institutions for the most part have had to be really cautious of how fast they move their savings rates. Okay. So you're getting good return right away on your CDs. Um, at Vibrant, we have offers like that too where we're, you know, five and a half on uh, products that you can get on CDs up to 575 depending on the balances that you have with us. But what we're doing a little bit different is we're trying to reward not only those that want to put money in a CD, mm -hmm. but those that want to put money in a savings or a checking account too. Okay. So we're offering 4.5% just for a straight savings account. Oh, wow. So if you have a savings account with Vibrant, you're going to get 4.5%, and, and you don't have to worry about locking your funds up for a long period of time. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, I would definitely say that would be attractive for somebody looking for, you know, local banking. Um, so beyond that, um, Vibrant has decided to make some really big changes. Yeah. Um, one of the things, I think it was like a quote from you that I read, um, that people aren't going to banks and credit unions in person anymore. Right. Obviously, that doesn't mean all people, right. um, but you have taken that into account and, and made some changes because of that. Yeah, so one of the things that we really started to look at is in any legacy industry, it's hard to go through change, mm -hmm. right? And, and the easy one to think about is the movie rental business, yeah. right? Where we all used to go into blockbusters yeah. and, and, and family videos. And eventually what happens is so few people walk in that you start to evolve to the way things are moving more digitally. And, yeah. and that happens in most industries. We're seeing it in banking really for the first time too, where more and more folks are going online or using their, their cell phone for the things that they do, mm -hmm. which is really driving so many folks away from the branch. Um, for us, what we decided is we could either continue to support that uh, branch environment for the few that are coming in, sure. or we could start to make some big changes, take the savings from those branches and apply those to the deposit rates overall, yeah. which is what's allowing us the ability to kind of price so much better than the market. Yeah, uh, truly amazing. It, the way that you guys have kind of uh, disrupted the traditional banking industry um, so uh, talk a little bit about what else you are doing in investing to kind of offset um, people not coming directly yeah. into the locations um, because I know we've seen some really cool things pop up with a vibrant name on it. Yeah, so I think that local still matters. At yeah. the end of the day, although we want to get the return that we can get from nationwide uh, digital only financial institutions, I do think everyone cares about their local community. Mm -hmm. So if you look at what we've done at Vibrant, um, we had an opportunity to put our name on the mark, which yeah. you know, we wanted to return the name the mark back in it, so the Vibrant Arena at the mark. Um, for us, we looked at what's one of the quintessential things in our community, and the arena really is something that brings so many opportunities yes. in. Yeah, absolutely, and we're seeing some images of that. And I think a, a lot of people would agree with you, like w you know, when they made the announcement of the name change and yeah. the fact that you guys decided to include the mark in that. I mean, I have lived here for about you know 13 years now, and all I heard since I moved here is that people still called it the mark. Right. <laughs> so I thought that was great that you guys decided to include that. Um, something else that I think is really great um, is that you guys are partnering with Junior Achievement of the Heartland. They're going to yeah. be making a big move um, this fall, and that's really because of the partnership that you guys have together. Yeah, so one of the things we found out um, a couple of years ago, we had a board member that was also on the board of Junior Achievement and had told us that Junior Achievement had found out that their kind of really good rent rates that they were getting in downtown Davenport were going to expire. And okay. they were kind of out of options as to where to go. Um, we had uh, fortunately been able to move into the former Sam's Club building and uh, had 140,000 square feet with a lot of excess capacity and thought, what other thing could we do than find a local nonprofit that needs space and can do something to impact our community. And so we ended up giving Junior Achievement about 14,000 square feet for a dollar a year. So wow. they have a 10 year lease at a dollar a year. We're really excited about the partnership to allow them to kind of uh, drive more and more value into the, yeah. the uh, children in our community. Well, and also, I mean, because of the things that they are learning uh, through Junior Achievement, it is such a great partnership to, to be doing this alongside a credit union, you know? I feel yeah. like there's just like a lot of impact that you guys can continue to make after they move in and, and open this space up. Yeah, their, their mission really aligns so well with what we want to see in financial freedom and in entrepreneurship.
partnership inside of our community. So it's just such a great long-term partnership with Junior Achievement. Absolutely. Okay, before we run out of time with you, talk a little bit about the Vibrant Headquarters. Yeah, so the Vibrant Headquarters, uh, one of the things that we looked at a handful of years ago was uh, inside of our uh, communities, there's always these, you know, old or uh, buildings that are big warehouses that mm -hmm. when they shut down, what else do you use them for? Yep. And we had an opportunity to uh, go in and purchase the Sam old Sam's Club building, remodel it, uh, turn it into really one of what we think is one of the more unique buildings in town. Uh, we opened up one of our coffee houses right in the front, it's which really is really popular. Yeah. A, yeah, great <laughs> thing for us here in the Quad Cities and really a give back to where a lot of times we get an imbalance here where so many things have moved from Illinois into Iowa and we were really committed as being an Illinois credit union to supporting both sides of the river mm -hmm. and so that was a big deal for us to not only go in with our headquarters but to also be able to put the coffee shop as an offering into that mm -hmm. side of the community. Yeah absolutely very cool and we're seeing those images on the screen right now. Well if you want to learn more about personal or business banking with Vibrant along with the perks of becoming a member uh, all you have to do is visit VibrantCreditUnion.org. Um, Matt thank you so much for coming in today and, and telling us all about Vibrant. Yeah, you seem you. like you're super passionate about it and that's that's really cool yeah thanks for having us Thank we appreciate you. it well up next on QCL May is mental health awareness month and we are taking a closer look at Eastern Iowa mental health services and the variety of ways the organization can help people get back on their feet you're watching Quad Cities live May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and it is time to stop the stigma surrounding mental illness. Danielle Atha is here from Eastern Iowa Mental Health. Uh, Danielle, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, first of all, uh, tell us a little bit about your organization specifically and um, some of the other uh, groups, organizations that you guys work alongside. Yeah, absolutely. So Eastern Iowa Crisis System started back in 2016. The Mental Health and Disability Eastern Iowa Region um, we work closely with as Robert Young Center. We manage um, the crisis system and we have 38 subcontracts with different agencies. Oh, wow. This includes Vera French, Family Resources, Life Connections, Hillcrest. Um, we cover five counties, so we're all over the place. So we cover Cedar, Clinton, Jackson, wow. Muscatine, and Scott counties. Wow, so uh, you guys really kind of have you, you have your hand in a lot of communities and essentially it's because you're trying to make an impact and you're trying to help people with all the services that you guys provide. Um, you do offer a lot of programs mm -hmm. um, and we're going to go over those for folks today. Um, let's start though with the crisis line yeah. um, and the mobile crisis outreach. I will say all the services that we are about to discuss are free okay. and um, it's for all ages. Um, some of our services are particular for adults and kids so I'll okay. go through that too. But our mobile crisis number is 24-7. 365. We define a crisis, whatever a person defines as a crisis. So my crisis may be very different than your crisis. Absolutely. You can call, um, we've had people call because their cats are upset with them, to I'm suicidal, homicidal. Sure. We'll take any of those calls. We primarily work with mental health crises, but we also work with substance use. Okay. Um, and that 24-7 line is awesome. Um, you will be directed to a person and they'll do their uh, assessment and then they determine if mobile crisis outreach is needed. Okay. And this is where two trained counselors will meet you wherever in Eastern Iowa region for free, de-escalate that crisis and then get you connected to services and supports. This is huge because uh, you know a lot of people I think are apprehensive about making that call in uh, in a crisis situation as you mentioned it could be any type of mm -hmm. a crisis I think oftentimes they're afraid that they have to go to a medical center or a hospital or something like that and that may prevent them that be, be the one thing that prevents them from reaching out and getting help mm -hmm. um, so uh, what's the response been like not only among people that you guys have responded to but the, re the, the counselors that respond themselves uh, we have people that call every single day, and that's okay, multiple times a day, uh, because they get something out of it. We still have people calling 911 for help, because a lot of people don't know where to go for help. So hopefully this segment will help people know where to call and 
who to, who can help. Absolutely. Um, let's talk next about the uh, co-responder program. As um, this is something that we've really seen um, emerge and come to fruition uh, probably just within the last few years. Yeah, so it started um, back in 2020 in Clinton County, Iowa, um, and we collected enough data through our pilot project to where it's expanded in all five counties. Wow. So we have a bachelor level staff writing with first responders and going and um, to those crisis calls and de-escalating and getting them connected to services and supports. Okay, and the go talk about the goal of the co-responder because obviously they're not um, stepping in in an emergency situation whether it's you know with a police officer mm -hmm. or some somebody like that. Um, they don't really have anything to do with that side of it, but they can make the outcome so much different. Absolutely. So the goal of co-responder is to actually reduce hospitalizations that aren't necessary to reduce jail that is not necessary, um, as well as getting people connected to what they need. Like I mentioned earlier, people still call 911 for help because sure. they're not sure where to go. Yeah. Um, you guys also offer residential services mm -hmm. um, in a variety of ways. So um, before we get into the different uh, locations and, and services, who are residential services for? How do they how do they work? So the residential services that we're about to talk to about are for adults 18 and up. Okay. And it's for anyone in um, the region. So Cedar, Clinton, Muscatine, Jackson, and Scott counties. Okay. Even though they're located in one county, it's available for anyone. Okay, um, so Vera French, that is um, one of the organizations that you work Correct. alongside for residential services. Um, and so what happens there? They just work with individuals at like a, a long-term basis? So it's short-term, it's about a seven-day stay. Okay. Um, so I like to think of the crisis stabilization house as a step down or step before the hospital. Okay. So if you need somewhere to go to get a break, someone to talk to, um, you'll be connected with a mental health professional, a nurse, and a therapist all within right. your stay. You get to work on some goals, um, you get your own bedroom, it is co-ed. All of the services that we're about to talk to about are co-ed. Okay, um, and this is different from something that you guys have called Rhonda's House. Yep. So describe that space for us. So uh, Rhonda's House was actually the first peer respite in the state of Iowa. Oh wow. So that's in our region. Um, that is different than the stable house because it's a lower level of care. You, it's housed and ran by peer supports. If you don't know what a peer support is, it's someone with lived experience, meaning they have a mental health uh, journey or a substance use journey that they went through and they are here to tell their stories and help others. Wow, okay. Um, you also work with a peer drop-in center. Um, so this, of course, um, they don't need a longer term stay or even a short term stay, Correct. as you mentioned with the Vera French. Um, so uh, people can just stop by at any point. Do they need to make appointments? How does that work? No appointment necessary. You can wow. stop by. Um, our Life Connections Wellness Center in Clinton actually has virtual options. So if you can't attend in person, you can also join online. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, and we do have another peer respite house in Muscatine. I yes. want to make sure uh, we talk about that. Um, that was the second peer respite house opened up in our uh, region. Okay. And that is in Muscatine, same thing as Rhonda's house, but we have two options. Wonderful. Yep. Yeah, uh, able to, to reach a lot more people yes. that way when you have those locations. Um, and, and before we let you go, talk about the importance of follow-up care because um, one thing that I noticed when just reading about your organization is um, how much you guys do in following up mm -hmm. with, with different clients um, after the very first time that um, you meet with them where they are. Um, describe the importance of that. Follow-up is very important um, because we can directly de-escalate a crisis, but that doesn't mean the crisis is resolved. Sure. So um, all the services we talked about, they send us referrals for care coordination. We do care coordination for all ages, including infants, um, up to however old um, you may be. Mm -hmm. And usually we'll work with individuals for about 30 days. Our goal is to get person connected to the resources, supports, and long-term services that they may qualify, but we will continue working with that person if they're continuing to be in crisis. Wow, fabulous. Uh, lots of information there, lots of great information. Um, now to learn more about the services provided by Eastern Iowa Mental Health, visit the website. It is right there at the bottom of your screen, Eastern Iowa mhds.org. Um, Danielle, thank you so much for coming on the show today and, and just describing everything for us. I feel like 
we could have spent five minutes alone <laughs> on just talking about um, some of those different locations that you mentioned, but um, it's just good awareness to have Absolutely. because uh, it, it's another tool for people, mm -hmm. I think, um, when they are, are dealing with any type of crisis situation. Thank so you for thank having you. us. Thank you, of course. Thank you so much. Well, coming up in your next half hour of Quad Cities Live, the focus is on protecting our credit during our financial moment with Heidi and later natural healing surrounded by nature. We'll get the details on a series of upcoming workshops involving gentle yoga and a sound bath. You're watching Quad Cities Live. Well, you may have heard identity theft is on the rise, but there are things we can do right now to protect ourselves. Heidi Hughes Camp Collins is here for our financial moment. Heidi, welcome back. Good to be here. Thank you so much for being here. Um, last time you were on the show, I think just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were talking about credit freezes. Um, so just give people a quick reminder about what a credit freeze is. Absolutely. So uh, let me talk for a minute about how one gets credit, a credit card or yeah. a new car loan or something like that. Sure. So what happens is you fill an app and uh, then the uh, creditor, you yeah. know, whether it's a bank or a credit union or a credit card company or something like that, um, sends your information, your, your uh, social security and your name and address and everything to one, to one or more of the three credit bureaus and they're Experian, Equifax and TransUnion. Okay. And then um, that unlocks your credit profile, which is how you've paid your credit over time. Okay. And then with that information, they decide to either, you know, give you credit or deny you credit. Sure. So that's a normal course of things. When you set up a credit freeze, what you do is you um, freeze your, your credit profile. Okay. Right. So um, since, since your credit profile is frozen, the um, when somebody reaches out with your information, they're they have no, it's all blocked and there's no access to your credit, so they won't make a decision. So nobody can hack in and get either a loan or a credit card from your account. Sure, it's a huge way to protect yourself and your and your credit score ultimately. Right. Um, okay, so if we, let's say we have put a, a credit freeze in place, uh, how can we unfreeze our profile and why would we want to do that? Sure, I mean, um, I had this happen to, to myself a couple weeks ago. You know, my credit is usually frozen and I was at a local store mm -hmm. and um, I'd made a big purchase and they were offering, you know, points and dollars off my purchase if I got a credit card. Yeah. You know, so something like that would sure. make sense, but if my credit is frozen, yeah, <laughs> that's a problem because yeah. then they couldn't reach out and give me the credit card. Okay. Um, so you would have to unfreeze your credit card. Now, when you um, freeze your credit card account um, with, with the three bureaus, mm -hmm. they'll give you a personal PIN, a okay. personal identification number. Um, you know, just like your, your ATM or something like that. So right. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a number and uh, you better keep, you hold know, on to that. hold on to that. And um, you will have to contact the three credit bureaus and give them your personal PIN to okay. unlock your um, credit freeze. Okay. So, and, and that that's pretty done pretty quickly. I'm it's assuming. done pretty quickly. If you if you reach out by email or call them, they have one hour to okay. unfreeze your account. Interesting. If you if you reach out by mail, three days. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, what are credit locks? This is another strategy uh, that that we can use to protect our credit. Right. Basically, it comes down to the same thing. Credit locks are products that are voluntarily given by the three credit, you know, bureaus. Okay. You know, again, Experian and Equifax and TransUnion. And they offer this as a service, as a product to consumers to lock up their yeah. credit, just like a freeze. Okay, awesome. So pros and cons then. So if we're, if we're deciding which one we want to do, um, right. there are some. Right. So because it's a product, the credit lock, um, by law, the credit bureaus are allowed to charge you a fee. Okay. It's a mandate that credit freezes are free to consumers. Okay. So there is a cost differential, but there's also a convenience factor. So you've got a pin with the credit freezes, mm -hmm. and you'll, you're going to have a separate pin for each of the three um, credit bureaus. Sure. Now, with a credit lock, you'll get an app to put on your phone, and then it's tap, swipe, 
open. You're open. Easy. Open. Un un unfroze it or, okay. you know, unlocked. Okay. So it just all depends on if you care about, you know, that extra cost. Yeah. Of and, doing you know, lock. it's not, a, it's not a big, it's not a big cost. Sure. You know, and for convenience, it might be worth it. Sure. And with, you know, with a credit freeze, if you lose that pin, mm -hmm. you are up a creek because, yeah. you know, it takes a lot of time and paperwork to get that unfrozen. Good to know. All good information as usual. Well, to learn more about the services Heidi offers, you can visit her website, hhcinvestments.net. And a reminder, you can see all of our previous segments with Heidi by visiting kwqc.com and clicking the tab for Quad Cities Live. As always, Heidi, thank you so much for being here. And good to be we here. will see you soon. All right. All right. Still to come on QCL, connect your mind and body while surrounded by the beauty of Mother Nature. After the break, we'll get the details on a series of upcoming natural healing events at Nahant Marsh. You're watching Quad Cities Live. There is a series of special opportunities coming up, allowing all of us to connect our minds and bodies with the environment around yep. us. Yep, Curtis Lundy is with Nahant Marsh, and Becky Nakashima Brook is the founder of Illuminate Healing Studio. Welcome to you both. Great Thank to be you. here. Yes, uh, Becky, welcome back. Um, so uh, let's start with you. Um, first, describe the variety of things that uh, you do that are really connected to natural healing. Sure. So um, I always go alphabetical order. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> um, end of life doula, qigong, reiki, sound healing, Thai body work, and yoga. I think that's everything. That might be everything. That's all? Yeah. Might have <laughs> Is that all? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, very experienced in, in this arena, if you will. Um, and uh, Curtis, tell us a little bit about Nahant Marsh for people that have never had the privilege yeah. to go and check out that space. Well, we would very much like you to come to Nahant Marsh. Yeah. It was started as it is now back in the 1960s. It was a gun club. and. Uh, shooting clay pigeons, really? not animals. Uh, but anyway, then 30 years later, uh, unintended consequences, all that lead shot yeah. went in the pond, uh, EPA cleanup site, uh, and in year 2000, nobody, uh, at that point, cleanup sites were not in high demand. Mm -hmm. But the city of Davenport took the land and Nahant Marsh uh, Environmental Center was formed. Got off to a slow start, uh, and anyway, in 2007, Brian Ritter became our director. Uh, in those days, we had 2,000 uh, program guests. Now, oh, wow. for the last five years, there's over 20,000 people. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's basically we're there to protect, enhance, and restore the nature, the habitat, but also to invite the community to learn and hike and uh, just enjoy themselves. Very cool. So obviously, you and Becky are both teaming up to uh, do this uh, environmental healing with the, or natural healing with the environment. So why do you feel that it's important to kind of incorporate the environment with natural healing? Well, from my perspective, uh, it's a wonderful habitat, but sure. when you bring in something like what Becky is doing to yeah. let people relax, to feel deep uh, in themselves in that environment, I think the two go together very, very well. So we're yeah. happy to have Becky uh, uh, do her activities there. Well, I think you're right. Uh, Becky, so one Saturday per month, um, starting this weekend, so yeah. from June, July, August, uh, you're hosting an hour of Qigong. I don't know if I'm saying that you correctly. You said it exactly. Okay. Very well done. Practicing. Yeah. Yes. Very, thank you very much, <laughs> Kyle. Qigong, Qigong, Qigong. Um, <laughs> and sound healing. Mm -hmm. So uh, just describe what each of those things are. Sure. So um, anybody can come. In the past, I've had anywhere from kids to adults, um, seniors come. And Qigong is a great way to have like movement meditation. So you move, we can even do some if you want, but um, we'll do a half hour of movement meditation. I recommend bringing bug spray, okay, sunscreen, sure. Good a idea. mat. You're in the environment. <laughs> yes. in the environment yeah. yep. um, an eye mask, uh, or just sometimes people will bring like a scarf or something just to put over the eyes because sure. the sun's really bright. And um, Depending, you know, Iowa weather, always different, so maybe the blanket. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but yeah, we'll do, I do recommend um, if you have time, if you can put your feet on the earth, that's way better than with the Qigong connecting. Okay. But for the sound bath to lie on a mat would be nice. Okay, good. So half hour, sound, half hour Qigong, half hour sound bath. Okay. okay, and the sound bath, and you brought some instruments yeah. that you yes. that will be included in this. Yes, so these are, um, this is actually a Chama Gitkar, sorry, Chama Kargit 
bell. Okay. Um, these are beautiful. from India. Yeah, so typically you'll see them like this, and they have a really pretty. That is yes. a nice, yeah. Yeah. nice little relaxing sound. Isn't that nice? Yeah. But um, Unlimited Gongs made them like this, so they're on a almost like a kind of like a xylophone. Yeah. So. Okay. So I love yeah. when you bring your yes. instruments here. Your instruments are very fast. <laughs> because now I am feeling already yes. much calmer. Right. Uh, what an what an awesome thing that uh, people can come out and do at, in a beautiful space, of right. course. Um, a very very healing. Yeah. Is this the first time you've done something like this? So I was talking to Curtis about this before. So uh, last year I I didn't do it, but the year before I was coming there, yeah. um, and then I I you know you just get busy. So they sent me an email saying people have been asking, will you come I back bet. out? Yeah. Which was really nice. So it's it is interesting with the sounds of the birds and the wind, and sometimes it feels like the birds are helping out with the sound. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. 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 Like it sounds like they're like, hey, let me help out. So um, I know last time I just did a, a the grief ritual. Yeah. The one of the birds was like afterwards was sitting on one of my instruments. <laughs> so that's amazing. Like yeah. yeah. Taking in everything. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Qigong and sound Beautiful. healing at Nahant Marsh takes place this Saturday, June 1st, as well as July 6th and August 3rd. So if you'd like to register for any of those dates, visit nahantmarsh.org and click on the ca calendar. Becky and Curtis, thank you both for joining us yes. today. Thank, thank you. you. So Pleasure. Much. It's going to be a great summer. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Your local news at 4 is coming up next. Have a great day.